So I was exposed to a lot of wonderful things, you know, early in my life and had a lot of great opportunities. And I've done a lot of different things. I've lived the ups and downs of life and I appreciated every part of it, maybe not at the time. Uh, I've been through the trades of making a living and uh, the trade-offs as well. And they're all part of my life, therefore, they're all part of my life. I've been married and, and divorced and I've had have children and all this, again, enters in to what I am. And so it can come out through my art, uh, maybe in ways that you might never recognize, that no one could ever see, but that I can appreciate. And I truly do, and I appreciate it while it's happening. Uh, in the creative process, there's nothing more exciting or pleasing to the artist than when the creative process begins to blossom and, and happen. It happens right before your eyes. I know it's coming out of your own head, but sometimes it, it'll surprise you. And uh, that's so much better than when you hit that roadblock and just you know can't come up with the idea. So when everything's flowing and it's all beautiful, I appreciate the experiences in my life that are, you know, pushing those ideas because I can see what's the underlying cause of, of why I thought a particular way, why I turned uh, a, a particular direction. And uh, when it helps, you know, I pay a little homage, whether it was good or bad in my life that I'm using as motivation for creativity. I pay homage because I appreciate the fact that uh, it's part of me and it's part of my work. Please introduce yourself. My name is Tom Ford and I am an eyefullstudio.com and I'm also Anonymous Coward Productions. And I was born in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the southwestern part of the state. And I've lived in Texas, I've lived in Colorado, I've lived in New York City, and now I'm living in L.A. Did you go to school anywhere? Well, schooling is something I'm, I'm pretty sorely lacking in. Uh, I went to work right out of high school. I kind of backed my way into the artistic field with that first job. It was as a geophysical draftsperson for the Gulf oil industry. And I've always been an artist. I was born an artist, so I always thought like an artist, very visually. Uh, very abstractly at times. I guess I've always considered myself an artist because I was born knowing how to draw and it was very natural to me and I assumed it was natural to anyone. You see it, you draw it, you imagine it, you see it in your mind's eye and you draw it. And I couldn't understand why everyone couldn't do this. Someone would say, how do you draw like that? I'd say, well you just draw what you see. Of course, there's a lot more to art than that. There's the imaginative part where you draw so much more than you can see. There's the technique, and everyone's technique is different. But I started out at a very young age just being able to do what I wanted to relative to drawing. And art was very important to me. It was all I wanted to think about. It was all I wanted people around me to talk about. My art is about life. In fact, I think art is a celebration of life. And the epitome, the, the greatest achievement of life, I think, is people. And I've always enjoyed representing life as it's being lived, not merely just survived. In other words, the story is interesting if you're just living, but if, or if you're just alive. But if you're living, that's the story. And that's, that's what I wanted my art to represent. So, people were the best, I guess, avenue for that, and I've always enjoyed drawing people. And as I grew, I self-schooled myself mostly because I would just study something until I wore it out. The minutia, the detail, the, I mean, almost down to a microscopic level, 
I would stare at something and learn it in its entirety, its line, its form, its shape, its dimension, its depth, and I would try to replicate that. And that gave me a very methodical and almost mechanical way of approaching illustration, which is good and bad. It's good for developing technique. But when you study the minutia of something, I guess there's a good and a bad side to that. If you focus on the detail and you draw only detail, then you become a mechanical machine and not so much a uh, creative or abstract thinker. But that's how I started my life, you know, really developing my technique, and that was my training, and that was my schooling. I would go to the museum, and of course I would look at the art, but what appealed to me were, I guess, the masters who, who specialized in realism, because that's the way I was still seeing the world. As a young child, the world was good enough on its own, because everything was new and amazing to me. So that's what I was interested in, drawing things the way they were. Not so much still life, but active life. And then once you start to mature and grow and see the world through other people's eyes, you learn different perspectives. The beauty of art is it grows with you. It evolves with you. Um, when you change, whether it's something good or bad, happy or sad, something that enlarges you or shrinks you, your art, because it's a part of you, flexes with your life and becomes a part of your life. You can't fake it, you can't force it, but you have to nurture it, you have to feed it with your experience. You feed it with your imagination, and you also feed it with your fears, and your joys, and your ups, and your downs, and your successes and your failures. Uh, so. Has it been difficult breaking into the art world? The world's a really tough place right now. I appreciate that for people who are just coming of age and going out into the, the world to try to make a living. I guess I grew up in a maybe a more fortunate time. I didn't grow up, I didn't have to have the fear of how I would make a living or get a job. I just assumed I could go out and get one. As a child, I always found a way to make money with art. If it was pinstriping someone's car or painting a sign for somebody who needed a sign painted. I'm not immune to life and I'm not like anyone else. I've, I've gone through my share of failures and successes and ups and downs. But I've always appreciated the fact that I've been able to carve out a living doing something that I actually enjoy, in one way or another, doing some form of art. I guess my flexibility that I've never confined myself to one discipline, or I guess just my curiosity that I, I've never tired of learning something new, has always kept me viable even in the worst of times. In fact, I've used my art between jobs to make a living. Uh, if I had to look for graphic art assignments to do off of Craigslist or... So a graphic designer of sorts? How did that come about? I got into graphic design, uh, I'm trying to remember precisely, but I'm old and I forget a lot. It was about 2002. I was working in New York City and I was a creative director for Bonjour Clothing. Now, Bonjour Clothing is a very large brand, probably the third largest clothing brand in the world. I had the prestigious position of designing a campaign to pitch to Kmart for a few of Bonjour's sub-brands of clothing. That was my only and sole purpose for being at Bonjour Clothing. It was a well-paying job. It was a very the fashion district of New York City. I really enjoyed it. But again, my sole purpose, my only purpose, was to design this creative pitch for Kmart. Well, it was in 2002 that K 
Kmart filed for bankruptcy. So just as I was getting comfortable with this job, I was out of a job. And New York's a very expensive place to live. And New York was also going through the economic impact of 9-11, which was, you know, just a little more than a year earlier. So there weren't a lot of opportunities. So as I found myself sitting in my high-rise apartment that I could no longer afford in front of a computer, I realized that this computer was an outlet to the world for me to try to find some work. And again, through things like Craigslist and other online sources, I found work designing logos, designing small advertisements, even, even doing automobile ads for newspapers. But what I was able to do was to find enough work to keep me going, to keep the bread and butter on the table, and to keep a roof over my head while I explored my options in the art world. And again, I never felt totally ashamed or... I don't even want to say that. I, I never felt ashamed. To, to have to do anything uh, to make a living because it's just what you need to do. And uh, while I wasn't creating works of art that were, you know, an inside picture of my soul, I was still doing things artistically. And I was still happy in the fact that, in the fact that I didn't have to end up flipping hamburgers somewhere waiting tables, or driving a taxi just to get by. And again, not that there's anything wrong with it, because when I did wait tables as a child, as a young man, I did it with an artistic flair, and I made a good living at it. And if I drove a taxi cab, I would be the best taxi cab driver in the world. And I would do it with an artistic flair. It's the human psyche again. Whatever we put our mind and our creativity to, we can take it to that next level and rise above. And I don't know if it's as simple as this, but maybe it is, so take it for what it's worth. I've never been a fearful person. I've never been afraid of change. In fact, I probably look for change and thrive on it, but I understand there's a lot of fear in the world today, and maybe justifiably so. Maybe I grew up in an easier time. I know for a certainty that uh, in many ways I did. But we had our own issues and our own problems and, and life in the world sometimes can seem like it's you know trying to hold you down, trying to make you cower and, and to be petrified. But maybe it's this simple. Maybe the fact that I realize that my imagination always allowed me uh, egress, an escape, a way out, a place to go, that I was never afraid ever in my life to try anything and I always had the feeling of entitlement to do whatever I wanted. I think more appropriately I never felt like uh, something was beyond me until, and I guess until I tried it and, and failed after exhausting every, you know, ounce of effort, but I don't know what that would be. So I didn't grow up as a fearful individual, and I did grow up as a, a very adventurous individual. So I was always reaching out to something new, something different, something that I haven't yet done or experienced. Uh, and I was able to grow from all that adventure, all that experimentation.